Hi guys, today's video is about food planning. So today's video is about food planning. In previous videos I've talked about food tracking and I use my fitness power and how important it is to track your food so you can see your macronutrients and your calorie intake for that day. It's going to help you to meet your body composition and your performance goals. But really I should have prioritized above that how important it is to plan prior to doing that. So if you're tracking after the event and obviously you're not really having a clear, a clear plan as to what you're going to do nutrition wise for that day, for that week and so on and so forth. And if you haven't got a plan in place then it's highly likely that at some point you're going to go off track because you're not going to be fully prepared for what's going to happen during that day. Maybe you're going to be run out of food, you're going to get hungry and generally when you get hungry you're going to make bad choices um, and you're not going to get the results you're looking for. So what the best way to do, the ideal, is to build a plan in advance prior to your week. So what I like to do is, I do it on a, on a, on a weekend, I'll make a little plan and I use my Fitness Power's premium features. Um, I'm not endorsed by them in any way, but I just think it's such a useful um, app that everyone should be using it and the premium features are a tiny amount per month. Um, what I like to do is I, I work out first of all my calorie requirements, then also my macro requirements. I, I like to sort of work on about a 30, 30, 40, so about 30% protein, 30% um, fat, 40% carbohydrates, because that gets me a good balance. And with the calories I have, it gets me my protein requirements, which are obviously my most important thing I want to try and get every week. And once I've done that daily plan of my calories, I then break that down into um, meals. So I break it down to the individual meal amounts. Um, so I have breakfast, I have a snack, I have lunch, I have a snack, and I have dinner, and then I have an evening snack. And I put all of those in there as well. And I try and keep those macronutrient profiles pretty much the same for each meal. Once I've broken those down and I've got those targets in there for the macros and for the calories, um, then what I'll do is I'll plan what food I'm going to actually use to to meet those requirements. So I'll start putting in my breakfast, probably in my lunches, my dinners. Now I'm pretty similar to my breakfast, I don't really change that too often. Maybe one day a week I might have something different. Um, snack wise as well, I try to keep pretty similar on that. So that's a pretty repetitive thing. And then dinner wise, most people have a cycle of meals that they have. Generally, I would say, you know, 15 to 20 meals that you have on a regular basis. So once you've kind of programmed in a couple of weeks worth of, of planning, then that's a, quite a simple job. Uh, then I just fill the gaps. I basically put in the, the main meals first. I fill the gaps with the snacks. Um, I try to balance out those macros as much as I can. I'm not going to be, you know, it's not an exact science. I'm not going to be exactly on the, on the nearest gram, but as close as I'm going to get each day. That's what I want to do. And I, and I plan my days based on what I'm going to do as well. So on a rest day, my calorific requirements are slightly lower. So the days aren't identical. Once I've done that plan for the basic meals, I then have to put in the treats and the nights out, the other stuff that are going to make a difference as well. So if you're planning your week in advance and you're not putting in any treats, any goodies, any beers, any wines, any anything that you like to have, anything your guilty pleasure, then it's not a realistic thing you're going to stick to. So you always have to have something in there um, that you're going to have as a treat. If you know, you can't be like a monk forever. So I would always put in there you know, beers or wine I'm going to have during that week or any kind of desserts in that plan because then I can build my other macronutrients around that. In terms of going out, which is obviously another big thing where people said to go wrong is when I'm going out, what I like to do is I over allow for my calories. So I, I basically um, overestimate the calories I'm going to be having during that night out or that meal out. And I underestimate my protein requirements because quite a lot of the time um, you're not sure what you're going to be eating. Uh, I don't want to be one of those people that's very specific and goes to a restaurant and says, I need this, 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 and don't just eat up the menu. Um, so if I want to make sure I get enough protein during that day, I'm not going to overeat on protein, really. You don't really it's very difficult to overdose on protein. So I'm going to make sure that um, I underestimate my protein for that meal. I overestimate on the calories, and then I try and build as many of the decent macros and also other micronutrients in there as well into the rest of my day. Now for some people, especially those of you that are smaller um, and have uh, lower calorie um, intake each day, you might find it difficult because I generally say like a meal out is about 1500 calories as an allowance, as a, as a basic, and then up to 2000 on other days. So those of you that have got smaller um, 
calorie totals per day, then you're going to need to probably spread this meal out over two, three, or even four days. So you're going to have to basically compensate for that um, overdosing of calories, I suppose you could call it, by having fewer calories on the other days. And if you may be under on the macros as well, I mean, you may take more of those macros on the other days. But you have to plan those into advance. And I, th I think, you know, yes, an ideal is for every day to be with inside your, your macros and every day to be inside your calories, but it's not always possible. So you will have to sort of spread it out. I like to think of it as a weekly allowance of 2,000 a day, that's seven, uh, it's 14,000 a week, sorry. Um, just quite a good way to manage your intake, especially if you've got a week where maybe you're away for work and you're going to be going out. So it's not going to be as easy for you to track. It's much easier to sort of um, just be better on the days where you can track it more accurately and then try to be sort of roughly around the number you want to be on those other days as well. Once I've built that plan in place, then I'll do my shopping. I do one online because it's too tempting when you go out to the shops to go and get some treats, especially if you go out when you haven't eaten for a while. Um, so it's much easier and it's just actually quicker because you can, if you, if you need to sort of see and you want to buy a snack that's kind of higher in protein or something, you can have a look at the nutrient, um, nutrition information online. You can compare it. You can check it on my fitness. You can even stick it on my fitness pal first if you want. Um, do my shopping for the week, make sure I've got everything included in there that I want to have during that week. It's also a bit more economical because you're not going to overbuy. A lot of people just go to the shops without a plan. You tend to basically overbuy and a lot of food wastage. And obviously, if you care a little bit about sort of that side of things, the environment, um, packaging and all of those areas, you can be a bit more um, frugal in terms of your shopping and a bit less wasteful as well. So I do that. I would say overall, probably takes I think the first time you do it, it's going to take you probably a couple of hours because you're going to have to um, like really be specific about sort of first of all building in what your macros are, um, requirements are for that week, and then breaking it down to your days and your meals and so on and so forth. That takes a little bit of time. Uh, once that's done, it's a one-time thing unless you need to make adjustments because you're not getting the results or you're, you're not feeling like you're getting enough of, of one macronutrient or the other. Um, and the first time you do your sort of numbers and, and work out what meals are, where you don't really have an idea of um what what's going to be in those meals so once you've started to put in those baseline meals and those those things you have on a regular basis really on a weekly basis it's, it's a very minimal effort so i'd say probably two weeks in or three weeks in it's a very very minimal effort to uh, to build that plan because often you're just repeating um the same plan before week. it's not not like you're going to have like you know a different meal and a different snack every single day of the week for 365 days a year so it's going to be very very regularly repeated so it, it's a it's a longer process to set up initially um but then every week, probably just, you know, I would say probably 10 minutes on top of your online shopping that you're going to do. So um, and it's well worth it because that's how you're going to get results. How you're going to make sure that you're sort of sticking to your numbers and you're actually going to see some, some changes and some improvements with what you're looking for. So priority this week is to think about food planning rather than tracking post the event. And hopefully if you do that, you're going to get some really strong uh, results. Thanks guys, any questions please put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and check me out on Facebook.